Meep! Hey, oh, oh no, Meep! What'd you do? Well, welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to Oxygen Not Included. Today, we're taking a look at the nuclear reactor, trying to set up a, a reasonable thing that we might be able to build inside of our base in order to get some power out of it, automate it, and hopefully keep it from exploding. Doesn't that seem like a good idea, Meep? Ah! And possibly avoiding a little bit of radiation and nuclear fallout. All right, so I'm gonna run through trying to set this up myself. I might not do it perfectly, but I've got some different ideas that I've been messing around with, and we're gonna see how this all works out. Just run through the variables. Bit of a learning process here. The most important thing that I can think of here is to make sure that the reactor always has water. As you can tell, it will explode if you don't have, you know, a coolant inside of it. It also seems quite easy to automate as well, because we do have an automation port, we could just turn the thing off. Uh, you can see it right here, I'm actually just using a steam pressure sensor in order to turn things on and off. The temperature that we're dealing with down here is about 400 degrees Celsius. Pretty stinking hot, which is also why I'm reducing the inputs for these steam turbines. It's not 100% perfect, I think we're still wasting a little bit of energy by overheating these, just a little bit. Considering the minimal amount of effort it takes to actually run a steam turbine like that, uh, that might be acceptable. If we wanted to do something a little bit different, I'd have to put in like doors and possibly temperature control the reactor, which is something that we can do. I think we'd need some sort of way to take the water that's coming out of here and recirculate it down into like a, a secondary chamber or something like that. <laughs> and then uh, I'll let that kind of cool down the gases and whatnot. Hmm. All right, so let me start off here by just destroying what I have, right? We don't need that anymore. Start with a nice blank slate. So I was, I was sort of thinking through something a bit like this. It seems a little bit too complicated though, and possibly just a little bit too big. I don't know, like you can possibly run, I think between eight and nine steam turbines like this with a reactor, but that might just be a little bit too much, almost not even practical because I mean, how much, you know, how when are you going to be absorbing that much power, right? So I'm kind of looking for something a bit more practical and most importantly safe and, and able to get the radiation and stuff out of there. So I like this arrangement right down here. Nuclear waste comes down into a pit. You can go down there and mop it up or do whatever it is you need to do. I kind of like that. Okay, another thing that I have to keep in mind here is the radiation that comes off of this. Uh, one thing that actually helps us avoid getting irradiated to death here is using the right type of material. So if we take a look at this, we can find that lead is really quite good at knocking down radiation here. So we have 25 up top, eight below. Diamond does pretty good. The rest of these are so-so. 11, 11, 10, what is this? Obsidian, okay, not bad. But the other material that's good here is graphite, which is new. So if we use insulated graphite, that would be a way to kind of get a, a half decent insulation material. It's not that great. But since we're using it in an insulated form, it's probably just fine. I think that's a good thing to use right around for the first layer. Now, I know we can use an auto sweeper to automatically pick up the enriched uranium here and load it into the reactor. However, uh, you need the high end materials in order to do that because you have to withstand the heat that is here. And if we start to look at the star map and figure out, okay, we could probably get to this planet as our third planet, which is going to be before we have the higher end materials. I'm not so sure that that makes sense. You know what? I wonder if we could drop the temperature of a reactor by dripping the water of our, our steam turbines back down into this chamber. I kind of think that that would actually work. So what if I do this? We have steam that comes out of here and I have some gold tiles and these gold tiles are gonna take in a lot of that heat from the steam, right? But I can drop that water right back down here Bloop, and cause it to flash into steam right down there, kind of cooling the thing down. I don't really like it being that close. It looked ugly. Let's try it. That might work. If so, then I can probably keep the heat down here eh, relatively cool. Actually, considering I want to do that right here, let's do it right there. That way I can do a sweeper right there. Ah, bummer, it's a bit too close. Okay, here's what I do. If I wanted to do shipping, but I wanted to do it with steel. So not quite as high temperature. I could still get it to work right there and then put insulated stuff right next to it. Give that a try. So now we run the centrifuge, uranium comes out, we load it into the reactor, boom. Probably going to have to destroy more of this up here. All right, how many steam turbines do I really need? Well, I tell you what, I'm gonna base it off of what I can make 
Well, I tell you what, I'm going to base it off of what I can do with a power plant here, which is going to be 96 tiles. So, 96 would get me all the way, oh gosh, all the way over here. Five is probably enough, although it looks like I might have room for one more. Tell you what, I'll just keep the space over there, see what happens. All right, so now I've added a bunch of doors here. Each one of these are going to be looking <laughs> at the wrong thing because I gave it the wrong sensor. All right, so now I'm going to add a sensor to each one of these doors. This way I can dynamically control um, how much water is making its way, sorry, how much steam is making its way into the steam turbine automatically. Ha ha! All right, okay, so the numbers I want to set are based on this right here. All right, so how this works is that we have all five doors open, which means all five ports are exposed to steam. If we are below 200 degrees Celsius, if we're below, you know, if we go above 226, then we only have three open. And if we go above 270, then we only have two open. About 350 degrees Celsius is our maximum. At that point, we end up getting a little bit too hot in the steam turbine and we're wasting energy. All right, so that gives me a solution for that side. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, nuclear waste will go right down here. Very interesting material, by the way. There's some fun stuff we might be able to do with it. If I wanted to put a liquid pump down here, that would be made out of steel. Ideally, a niobium or something like that not, as to not melt, but we'll see if it can hang out. We'll see if we can keep that from melting. I don't have high hopes. It's a pretty hot spot right there. Unless I do more of this. Maybe, maybe this is the, maybe that's the meta. Who knows? All right, so the other liquid we need to deal with here is going to be the uranium, the liquid uranium that comes out of the centrifuge. Now, that stuff's actually quite valuable. We're going to need to have some good uses for this stuff because it can get super hot before turning into a gas. So I want to make sure I have that mm, stored up in a place that's going to work. So in the past, I was kind of like making a pit down here and just keeping it as liquid, but I don't think I want to do that. But it still needs to maintain over 100 degrees Celsius. I don't know what to do with that one. I would like to put it inside of a tank. However, the tank itself is probably going to break under that much heat. Doesn't go that hot, does it? Melting point, sure. But overheats at 275, which is something you don't want to have happen if you're storing a bunch of uranium. Well, let's deal with the other half of the liquid here. The stuff that's going into the reactor. So I know that I need to have water on hand. <laughs> Otherwise, this thing explodes. So I'm going to need an automation signal coming off of this tank, just to let me know that I have water available. Because if I don't, I want to make sure that I disable this thing. The other thing is I really don't need a, I don't need a bunch of steam. I just need to have enough steam up here in order to make it work. So I think those are my two sensors. Essentially, I'm saying we're below, let's say four kilograms of steam and we have water. So if I bring those in and run those to an AND gate, and there we go, both of those are true, therefore we can run our reactor. Good, nice and safe. Hmm, but I'm not doing anything to control the heat. Let's try to add that variable in here as well. So, thermal sensor, made of gold. We'll just keep this nice and simple. Put an AND gate there and another AND gate right there. All right, so we have water, we don't have too much steam, and we're below a certain temperature, boom, then we can run. Same sort of deal though, if we're above a certain temperature, actually, you know what, I already have like 226 right there, so let's just tap into that chunk of automation. Boop. All right, now let's tie this into the liquid side of things. So the water will come out of here, combined with everything else. If it's too hot down here, then we're going to run the water and drip it into a couple of spots, right here and here. Otherwise, we're just gonna run right past this and deliver it to the tank, which I guess honestly should be over here, but um, okay, let's redo that. I'm going to make those just, I'm going to make these puddle spots just a little bit bigger. Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. If we want to run it down here, then it can go like that. Otherwise, it's going to go into the tank. Perfect. And then that tank empties out right here into the reactor. So for my signal, that's going to run this guy right there. I'm just going to do this number, bring it up like that, and then we're going to use a not signal. So we flip it. Uh, that way, you know, when this is running, these are not dripping and vice versa. Maybe that works, maybe it doesn't. Okay, that's off to a good start. Now let me take a look at the station here. We need a power control station. Boom. Kind of a big thing. So 
Gonna make sure I have enough room for that. Slap in a little bit of a door. There we go. Nice. All right, there we have it. It's as much room as I can get in there. That's 96 tiles. So at least now I have a power control station inside of here. We can kind of do the things I need to do. It's probably a reasonable idea to have some sort of heavy watt conductive plate over here because we have all of this power, loads and loads of it. And then some sort of door. All right, so there we go. Power can get out. All right, I was looking to put uranium ore inside of a storage bin here, but it seems like that is currently not selectable. So a little bit of a bug report, but essentially that's what I would have over here. Now, let's gain some access to this area. Remember, the temperatures we're dealing with inside of here is right around 400 degrees Celsius. So one of the liquids we have access to at this point in the game that would probably work for kind of a, a way to create some sort of vacuum lock here so that we don't have a lot of heat getting out of there would be some oil. Although you might have to ship it in. Now, in my previous video here, I was using a bit of naphtha between the two to kind of create a vacuum lock with some pumps and whatnot. However, I don't know what planet we can actually get iso resin from, so... So I don't see that as being a viable option at the moment. Let's go ahead and build a liquid lock here. Now, I for one am getting kind of tired of building liquid locks, but... Oh well. It is what we have. And I think what I want to do down here in order to be safe is to have a double liquid lock. So, I would have right inside of here... Something like a little mini gas pump, just to kind of push the extra air out. Boop. Just like that. And then, just drop a bunch of oil in here. So, the crude oil can heat up on this side, and then we go through a vacuum. You know, that sort of thing. Of course, I have to be mindful that steam might try to condense over here. Let's see here. Maybe this will work. Maybe that will push any sort of, like, water out. Let's give it a try. Let's get a little bit on there real quick. Open that up. There we go. All right, so there's still two more things we need to deal with. The uranium that comes out of this centrifuge, I need to store it somewhere. And it's actually a pretty valuable resource in that uranium can, can get very, very hot before it turns into a gas. Mm, what am I gonna do with that? Hmm. <laughs> well, this right here is kind of the edge. So maybe I store uranium over here. And I believe the output temperature of that isn't too bad. No, it's not telling me. Let's take a look here. Meep just threw in a little bit of uranium here. So, if I run this over here like that, what is the heat? 186 degrees Celsius. Okay, not bad. So this should work so long as I have a steel pump in here. I'll have to go and do something with it. All right, so another thing I need to deal with here is the steam turbines. I really need a steam turbine to cool the steam turbine sort of thing with a cooling loop. So let's see if I can find a good spot for that. Right here looks to be a fairly reasonable spot to build something like that. And then right down here, we have an aqua tuner. All right, there we go. Obviously we need power for all of this. Thankfully we do have power. Just have to get our hands on it, which as it turns out, shouldn't be too hard. Because we already have that right there. Boom. Well, you want to make sure you always have a little extra power in order to run this stuff. So, how much power do I have down here? We have 850 watts of generation, but we're using 1,200 plus 480. Okay, so it seems like I can run most of this stuff down here off a 2 kilowatt wire. Alright, so three of these right down here. Smart batteries, that should be good. And we need a way to charge them up. So I need a power transformer somewhere around here. All right, so there we have it. Large power transformer, conductive wire, boom, boom, boom. All right, cool, cool. The other thing I need to run though is these Radbolt generators. So these collect particles, which I have set up to be collected right here. Those are 250, 240 watts each. So that right there is a thousand watts, boom. Thing keeps getting bigger means I'll have yet another battery right down there and just run that stuff right there. Boom. All right, as much as I might want to be done, uh, I'm not there yet. This here is going to be the outlet for that steam turbine goes right there. 
We have the inlet, so this is our cooling line. So that is hot return, and this is cold out. So we need to have some gold radiant pipes right there, and a couple more right up here, just to kind of soak up all that heat. Hmm. <laughs> all right, so I think that's it for the design. My feelings thus far is that it is actually a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be. If you really want to get in there and do a lot of the details, there's a fair amount of things to manage. It's kind of easy to look at that and say, oh, it outputs steam. Just put a steam turbine above it and oversimplify it. Hmm. Let's prime it up and see if it works. All right, there's only two liquids I actually need here. That's just polluted water and water. Blech. So the polluted water is what I use for my cooling loop. You just get a little bit more range out of it. And then as you can imagine, the water is just for the steam turbine. So I'm gonna figure out where I can get the water. <laughs> Uh-oh, lots of spaghetti. All right, so things are off to a start here. First thing I can see is that this liquid pump is getting too hot. The internal temperature here is over 300 degrees Celsius, so I don't think that pump is gonna make it. I also got a lot of hydrogen in here. That's not gonna work. That needs to get out of there. I should be able to mix oxygen and steam together and have this actually work. Ideally though, you'd wanna have a complete vacuum. All right. Well, we got a lot of steam. Things are running. Meep is actually tuning up the steam turbines. Nice. Good job, buddy. Let's take a look at the radiation inside of here. Actually, not too bad. We're not getting too much out of here. It was at, what, only two rads? Yeah, only two. 36 in this area. Again, not too bad. You can see the doors doing their thing. Keeping all of these below 850 watts. Though they do activate a lot. Okay, so now we've got the first sort of thing happening here where liquid I water is coming out here to try to keep that temperature down. So let's keep an eye on temperature and some spot here. So this is where I'm looking. I got 200 degrees, 250 right here. Ooh, we might have reached a point of equilibrium now to where it's right around just under 200 degrees Celsius. Maybe this is working. Hmm, but now we sucked all the steam out of there. Meep! Oh, Meep, you really like to farm. All right, so here goes Meep. It's going inside of here. We'll load up the centrifuge. It's doing its thing. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't put any water down here. And you saw the auto sweeper there automatically load into the re reactor, so meat doesn't have to do that. It's just heating up. There we go. There goes the steam. So it seems like the steam comes out down here. I thought it came out at the top. Which again is why this pump is constantly overheating. Hmm, which is also why that auto sweeper is overheating. Okay, I don't mind this, except for these doors need to be set up differently. Oh, here's the thing that I can't do. I can't just leave uranium ore inside of here. Or else it'll melt. Mm, I need to kind of keep it over there, don't I? Makes me wonder if this will get hot enough to the point where that uranium ore heats up in Meep's hands as he's running through. Don't know. I am trying to keep the temperature down in here. It seems like it's working. We're at 260 degrees Celsius. <laughs> the poor Meep is just running back and forth constantly to fill up this centrifuge. It doesn't really contain a lot of stuff, which is kind of a kind of a problem. All right, I think this might run better if I just slow it down a little bit. Let's say three kilograms instead of five. All right, so yeah, the one thing that doesn't work here is this liquid pump. And that's for the nuclear waste. Right now, I guess we'll just let that nuclear waste sit right down there. Do what it needs to do. Maybe we'll come on over here and just mop it up at some point. Everything else though, now that it's all kind of reached equilibrium, seems to be working pretty good. The amount of radioactivity that's getting out of here isn't too bad. The only spot where it's sort of high is right here, but that's that's still 20 or so, which isn't, it's not too bad. Honestly, that's about as much as what you'd get right up here in space, which again, your dupe can absorb up to 100 per cycle. Like, as far as the heat, you know, graphite not being the best material for insulation does seem to be working out all right. Having this sort of vacuum system here does work out for dupe <laughs> Meep here has to constantly run so this centrifuge could probably use a little bit larger inventory inside of it maybe 100 kilograms or 50 doing this sort of number to automate the doors seems to work out i don't seem to be wasting you know i'm not losing anything to overheating i should say it does make it kind of annoying though to listen to all the time because the doors keep opening and closing constantly 
If I put my mouse right here, you can see that's right around 200 degrees Celsius. So kind of my, my recooling system, or at least the idea of it, is actually working. I'm able to run this reactor a little bit cooler than it would be running all by itself. So it's not 400 degrees. That means this auto sweeper here is just surviving. <laughs> it can only go up to 275, but right now it hovers right around, mm, it gets up to about 240, maybe 250 right there. That got pretty hot, but then it goes back down. Ooh, that was 260. Oh, <laughs> maybe instead of insulated tiles, I put gold tiles there. Uh-oh. Hot! Ooh, hot! <laughs> nope, insulator was the right idea. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll put a temperature shift plate over there. That might be the one time that this is actually quite useful. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Let's see how the pressure's doing. We're down to 1,500 grams. We're actually moving a fair amount of water through this thing. You can see that all those doors are staying open. Okay, you know what would be useful here? is a weight plate for the uranium. And then just run an automation signal from that to that. If this is above 20 kilograms, then we turn it off. That way, MAPE here doesn't need to run over here all the time. And we can just leave that to... <clears throat> Let me take a look at the report here real quick. See just how much power we produced in the last cycle. We produced 1,800 kilojoules. And that's without any sort of buff on this stuff. I'm gonna try to run this even slower. Let's go all the way down to one kilogram. See if we can make this nice and efficient. Let's get Meep over here tuning this stuff up. All right, yeah. Running this at a lower amount of kilograms here does seem to keep the temperature, well, I don't know, it still swings. But I think the pressure is a little bit lower. It used to be 1.6 kilograms. Now it's actually around 1.2. Oh, you know what I just figured out? I should hook these up on the same automation as the reactor because you see when the reactor no longer runs, these things aren't collecting anything, but they are soaking up the power. So by doing that, I can make these a whole lot more efficient. Boop. Current load 960. Well, that's rude. They're still sucking down the power. <laughs> Fine. If you want to play it that way, we can play it that way. Here you go. Power shut off. I'm running a little bit of a, an experiment. I'm collecting some data here just to see how much power I'm generating versus removing. All right, so I've let this run for several cycles now on one kilogram mass that I'm using for my target here. So I'm not going to jump it up to three and then to five as well. But essentially what I'm doing thus far is I've produced, using these steam turbines up here, 2,000 kilojoules on average per cycle. That's with the tune-up. And you can see the amount of power that I'm consuming. This is base-wide, so some other things are involved as well, but for the most part, you can see that there was a big drop from automating this right down here. I went from 997 kilojoules used per cycle, dropping down to 600. So I was saving a good 300 kilojoules just by automating this along with that so that they don't run all the time. And I am still collecting radiation over here inside of a collider for research. So I think that's actually a really good thing to do. From the looks of it, the amount of radiation that's giving off here, whether I'm using one kilogram or three kilograms, doesn't seem to be any different. It seems to be the exact same amount. Although I am blowing up this auto sweeper a little bit more frequently. You know, just from the looks of it, three kilograms seems to be just about right. I just about max out these steam turbines. The doors close down just enough to kind of keep them from getting a little bit too hot. But yeah, definitely producing a lot more power when I'm running this with three kilograms as compared to one. Look at that. Just about, just about, but not quite. All right, so I've got some in... All right, so I've got some interesting results here. All right, so let's take a look at these numbers here because they're actually quite interesting. Uh, running this on one kilogram, you can see that my average amount produced was 2,000 kilojoules. That jumped up to 2,700 kilojoules when I went up to three kilograms. However, I did run into a bit of a problem when I was running with five kilograms. However, I did get a few good cycles out of that. Again, that's right around 2,700. I believe I'm just simply limited by what I'm able to consume inside of the steam turbines. However, what I noticed over here is that the amount of power removed went up. And the reason for that is because the, I believe the temperature swing is quite a bit more and therefore it might just heat up the steam turbines a little bit too much because the extra power being removed is coming from this aqua tuner down here. 
So it seems like, at least with this current arrangement here, somewhere between one and three is going to be that sweet spot. So maybe about two kilograms or so. So the reason for that dip there is because I ran into a little problem over here. The uranium that my duplicate's picking up and running through these liquid locks actually melted in his hands and then ended up right there. So that brings up a, a couple of good points. One, obviously, if this gets a little bit too hot here, the amount of mass that he's carrying, which is just 10 kilograms, um, can heat up in the amount of time it takes to get from here to there, which can cause a break in the whole kind of logistics of how we get and feed uranium into the centrifuge. So maybe we want to do this outside of the chamber. That might be another, a way to get around this. The other thing I learned here is that the auto sweeper does stay nice and cool when I set it up like this as compared to how I have it previously. And that doesn't seem to affect the steam turbines up here at all. So I'm not 100% sure if this over here is really necessary the way it is or if I could come up with a better arrangement. Automating the rad bolt generators down here is an excellent idea. That actually worked out really good. And in general, just having these mechanized airlocks down here to kind of automate the steam turbines so that they don't run too hot is fantastic and that works out really really good plus the idea of actually dripping water down here in order to cool down this environment so that we don't have to run the reactor quite as much not only does that kind of allow this stuff to be nice and efficient up here because we're not running it at 400 degrees celsius which is above even its two port maximum not by much but it still is above that but it also keeps this relatively cool down here as compared to being at 400 degrees Celsius, which would cause even more problems of trying to get that uranium into here. So is it the best arrangement? No, probably not. But for a proof of concept and getting some ideas out the door, yeah, I think the, there's definitely a lot to take away from this. At any rate, that's all I got time for today. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar, out.